well over 400 props are available right now for Super Bowl 51 at several books around the Strip in Las Vegas. And I remember at one time they used to say, well, it's just props are basically just another way for the books to make money. It's a sucker bet. That went away a long time ago. There are good bets and good props to make. Hey, everybody, you're watching Wager Talk TV. I'm Scott Spritzer. He's Brian Leonard. And we're going to talk about some props and how to approach betting them. And Brian wanted to kick things off by just asking you some advice when you grab a, a prop sheet with 400 props, some of the advice you can give people that you use yourself on how to stay away from so-called sucker bets mm -hmm. and make the smart bet. Some of the sucker bets have been winning lately. So. Absolutely. <laughs> this is a generalization. Played 100 times, we're getting a good spot. But, uh, you know, there's safeties coming up. And, uh, but, yeah, uh, if you're doing this for a living and you're not doing it for fun with your friends, you want to get as many plus EV bets as you possibly can. And I've got three rules on what I want to do. And when they have a yes or no bet, I want to bet the no. When they have an over-under, I want to bet the under. And when it's a big juice against a plus, a minus, and a plus, mm -hmm. I want to have the minus. Mm -hmm. The three reasons for that is most people want to see a high-scoring game. They want to see a lot of things happen. They want to see their favorite players do well. So the line will come out on plus, you know, four and a half catches. It'll be minus 110. Mm -hmm. Everybody bets it up. It's minus 140. Obviously, there's value on the under. So the, the yeses and the noes and the same with that. But for example, for years I used to bet there will not be a missed extra point. Mm -hmm. And one year I laid 16 to 1. Mm -hmm. Well, the true odds of that were really high. Sure. It's obviously not anymore with the new <laughs> rules. But I sweated out the game <laughs> like you'd never <laughs> believe. But, you know, I had two kickers who would have missed one extra point all season long, and I'm only laying 16 to 1. Yeah, it's obviously, like you said, a lot of the stuff that you can deal with and you can make bets are on, in reality, the math itself would show that the odds should be much different than you're actually getting. You can use that to your advantage in right. some cases. Give us a prop that you're looking at. What I was going to say real quickly, by the way, to add to what you just said, and I agree with everything you said, is that, folks, if you're going to bet props and you're doing it for more than just entertainment, 20 bucks here and there, make sure the props can happen and take place no matter who's winning the football game. Don't get caught up in, you know, well, I love Team A, so I'm going to bet all the props that favor Team A, because if Team A lays an egg, man, you're in for a real long afternoon. So uh, on top of what you said, I think that's pretty good advice. Give us a prop you're looking at for this weekend. Uh, in honor of medical marijuana and regular <laughs> marijuana being uh, legal now here in Las Vegas, I'm going with Blunt or Blount or whatever you, you want to pronounce it, over, over the total in uh, yards. Uh, the way I look at this game is I don't think uh, Belichick wants to get out in a shootout with Atlanta. He wants to take time off the clock and rest his defense a little bit. Nothing better to give the ball to your quarter or to your running back who doesn't fumble very often. And he's going up against a defense that uh, is weak against the run. I think we get a lot of rushes out of Blunt, and I think he's going to get the uh, over 60 in yardage. I was wondering where you're going. <laughs> no Winnie the Pooh references. <laughs> That's right. No Winnie the Pooh references. I did uh, jump on Blunt, by the way. Uh, the player uh, on a prop that he would score a touchdown in this game, which was minus about a dollar sixty-five. That was over at CG uh, T Sportsbooks last week when they first brought him out. He scored 18 touchdowns in 18 games, 14 of the 18 games he's actually scored a touchdown. And I think the only time he hasn't scored a touchdown in the last six or seven games was when he only had eight carries a few weeks ago in a game that he was sick, a little bit under the weather, and he didn't get his normal carries. He had eight. But uh, another one I'm looking at also is Taylor Gabriel over 46 and a half receiving yards minus $1.25. He's averaged about 57 yards per game over the last 10 games, three receptions or more in eight of the last 10 games. And we all know what New England does under Belichick in big games. They take away that star player, Julio Jones in this case, and that maybe makes Taylor Gabriel open for a couple of more catches that he can turn into some decent yards after catch. There's your props from Brian and from myself. We've got more to come. And by the way, don't forget, you could take $10 off any purchase at wagertalk.com this weekend. Simply use the code SUPERBOWL51. More to come, more Wager Talk TV.